Hello and good afternoon, Heart Culture Community. Um, I'm here today with Tony Warner, who is the director of the Black History Walks um, website, which organises, you could say, cultural walks and educational walks that, about yeah. the contribution of um, about Black history here in the UK. So. As I said earlier, Black History Walks has hosted a special event today which has brought the research team together um, that's presenting the projects on the British or the, the history and the legacy of uh, British slave owners. Um, so what is your response as the organiser of you know, the event today, disseminating the information? How have people received um, the launch today? Um, they've received it um, enthusiastically with open arms. They're very keen actually people are still in the um, auditorium now like 40 minutes after the presentation is finished um, all, the pres all the feedback we got verbally and written was excellent fantastic impressive liked it gonna come again wonderful keep up the good work that's what we got so far fantastic and in terms of black history um, walks and how it links I mean is it, is it fair to say that it's a, a way of engaging um, people in the history obviously literally yeah, you could say that I mean you could say yeah it's an engaging way of um, actually finding out about your black history so basically you walk down the street every single day and what we do in a black history walk is we walk down that same street we pull out all the African history that's in the streets that goes back 500 years 2,000 years or 3,500 years and we just pull it, pull it out and say look this is your history in your face how's it make you feel yes okay and for what made you well in terms of connecting with a piece of research such as um, you know the legacy of, of British slave owners what was the you know what was your your motivation or, or what, what was you trying to achieve by doing that and bringing it to the forefront here at, here at well, when I went to I went to an initial lecture hosted by Dr Nick Draper about four months ago and it was a small room in Holborn library and there's about 12 people in there and four of them were the research team. And I thought, from the information I heard, I thought there must, there are more people who'd like to know about this and I know some of them, yeah. so let me see what I can do. And also, what happened at that particular event was that there was a guy there who said, isn't a guy or a white guy who said, isn't there a danger this information might get out to people? So from the time he said that, isn't there a danger? I was like, right, well, there is a danger, it's me. So I'm going to make sure this gets out to as many people as possible. So... Um, I used my networks, I used a few friends that I had and called them a few favours and we gave it like four, what, three months publicity, we got a free venue in Central London location, we put it out via Facebook, Twitter and um, Black History Watch website and we ended up with something like 300 people who had actually registered to attend this event but what happens when you do a free event is that people always drop out so we actually had something like 150 turn up but, but 300 people know about the event and 150 turned up and feedback so far has been excellent off the chain. Excellent. So, in terms of moving forward, um, how can, in, ter and in terms of black history, how do you think this kind of resource will be received in the community? Because, I mean, it's based on empirical information. Yeah. Because, as, I mean, as it was stated today, it's from the viewpoint of the, the slave owners mm -hmm. and with some partial information about those that were enslaved as yeah. that kind of information wasn't usually kept. Yeah. You know, as we said, certain uh, names, real names were practically tossed to the side. Yeah. So, you know, what? how do you think that kind of information will be received? It's a fantastic resource because most of the information we have in this country comes from the slave owners' perspective anyhow. If you go to the British Museum, it's full of stuff that's been nicked by the British Empire and all the history is written from the British Empire's <laughs> perspective. So they'll talk about how they kind of acquired this, you know, stuff from um, Medina and actually it was stolen. End of story. So, so as far as the resource is concerned, it's a fantastic resource because it has all this information. You can sit at home on your laptop and tap in your name, the plantation, or the, the island, whatever, or the street that you live on. It will come back. And that's, that's incredible. And that's never been the case up to this very day. So it means that all the research people will be taking like years to do can have done in a matter of so it's a fantastic resource. So, obviously, as uh, as the uh, community uh, knows, you know, there have been quite a few events that have been, you know, looking at uh, cultural engagement and trying to enrich that uh, cultural experience and people to engage with with factual information. 
and look at a sense of truth of, of you know uh, maybe where they come from so this this has come at such a brilliant time We're talking about leading a golden era you know and, and where people come from and origins you know the, the what what has been presented here is that you can actually access this database and you know basically research your family history from uh, uh, using it as a tool because a lot of the records would have been kept with again that with those uh, slave owning institutions or homes or private estates yeah. or you know uh, companies literally you know um, so again just to um, to round up on that how can people again um, try and inspire and help to spread the message uh, well even attend black history yeah. what, what, what can we you know what can um, we um, look forward um, what to, look forward to do oh, sorry it, look to, forward to, doing, to or do to oh, doing. okay right so first first thing you got to do is you got to um, go to the website blackhistorywalks.co.uk walks blackhistorywalks.co.uk add yourself to the main list and that way you'll get advance notes of every single event we do and we also have a Facebook page, and we're also on Twitter. Twitter is Black History Walker, and Facebook page is just Black History Walks. And what we have planned for the next two months is some fantastic stuff. So tomorrow we've got an event called Mary Seacole Fights Back. It's all about who Mary Seacole really was. That's the 2nd of March, because today is the 1st of March. It's the 2nd of March. Oh, sorry, 3rd of March, because yeah. today's the 2nd. And that's at 3 o'clock. Um, and that's been hosted by Professor Elizabeth, Elizabeth Anion, who is like an expert. She's a black woman professor, first of all. And she's an expert Mary Seacole, head of the Mary Seacole um, Statue Trust. And campaign where it is, and then we also have a Black History a Black History Walk tomorrow in Soho, and we also have Black History Walks in St Paul's and Notting Hill and Elephant Castle coming up this month, and then we're also planning on a big event called Black Women Architects and Builders, and we we'll, we got nothing but Fantastic. Black female architects speaking and actually Black female builders speaking about their experiences of building, and then we got an event looking at um, the history of reparations in the UK. Headed up by Sister Esther Stanford Zosia, she's going to talk about us about what African people have been doing in this country to fight reparations going back 200 years. And then we got another event called African Superheroes Day, all about the black superheroes, because in that one event, right, we have 80 black superheroes that are female, and that's just the females, not the men, 80, because people don't know they've got black superheroes. I've got that, then I've got another one called How to Brainwash Thief Make a Man Like Fools. So it's all about how kids are conditioned to be able to fools by watching certain music videos computer games movies and we break it down and we've done this in primary schools and it, and again for, i mean even from, from some looking at comics and, and books and cartoons that's all culture yeah. isn't it so absolutely it's what kind of culture